All right. So my name is Erin, and today I'm going to be speaking a little bit about accessibility in the arts. So we've all heard of Beethoven, right? But how many of us have heard of Chris Fonseca, Eric Stegman? What these three individuals have in common is they're all passionate men working to, con working to contribute to the arts while living with a disability. Chris Fonseca is a deaf dance instructor who teaches his deaf students that dancing doesn't have to just be for the hearing. Enric Stegman, is, whose pi picture you're going to be shown now, if you like, don't mind looking at it, is an artist who um, belongs to a group of other artists who um, have lost use of their hands for whatever reason and paint using their mouths and feet. So, thank you guys. So art is an essential part of the human experience. It's extremely cathartic and encourages people to express and feel emotions in a way that is healthy. Art is necessary, but not just for people who don't have disabilities. In 1984, President Reagan said that for disabled people, art is, quote, an essential part of leading a full and productive life, end quote. However, even today, there are still serious uh, access problems for accessibility in the arts for people with disabilities. So today I'm going to speak briefly about what some of these problems are, um, why they are problems, and then offer some ways that we can approach them in the future and kind of figure out how we can solve them. So the first time I ever saw a musical live uh, that like really affected me was Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and I fell in love. I loved the set and the sound, the lighting, the music, the story, the whole experience was just perfect. Um, now I'd like to compare that experience to one Kaj Kroff had, or Kaj Kaus had. Kaj is a deaf graduate student who contributed to an article published in The Guardian in 2015, where they described their experience going to see The Spring Awakening on Broadway in 2006. They speak about the struggles of going to see a show only to miss half of it because they had to read along to a script with a script they had printed out beforehand. They speak about the sadness you feel at going to this amazing artistic production on Broadway and realizing that it wasn't made for people like you. A lot of times when people with disabilities go to artistic uh, experiences, which can include presentations, uh, theatrical shows, museum exhibits, also classes and different opportunities where they themselves can um, perform art, they uh, feel that that these situations were not made with them in mind. They feel excluded, and that can be a really big issue. Although in the United States, we do have legislation that requires um, artistic, uh, artistic experiences, as well as other things, to be made physically accessible for people with disabilities. Uh, this legislation includes the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. There are still attitudinal barriers and stigma that cause people to feel uncomfortable when they go to these things. So based on a study done, based on a study done by surveys in New Jersey uh, in 2011 by the New Jersey Art Access Task Forum, it was found that although um, there are huge amounts of benefits for people with disabilities to gain from going to artistic experiences, about 60% of artistic institutions have 5% or less of their um, customers are people with disabilities. So there are clearly a lot of people who aren't actually going to these things. Um, one reason that that is, is as I mentioned before, these, feel these attitudinal barriers and feelings of stigma that they feel like if they were to go to these places that they wouldn't be accepted there. So in the same survey-based study, which was published um, in, two, in an academic journal in 2012 by Ludwig, it is shown it is uh, shown that about that, that that people don't recognize that there's actually a problem. So about 86% of the artistic institutions interviewed or surveyed said that they felt that people with disabilities would be completely comfortable going to their institution. However, um, around 50% of people with disabilities who were surveyed stated that they feel uncomfortable going to artistic experiences because they feel that they would be ridiculed, pointed out, stared at, or just that the staff there wouldn't be able to handle their disability effectively. So um, this is a problem because people with disabilities are people first, and they would like they need to express themselves just as we do. So. Um, in a YouTube video published in 2013, a poet and teacher at a, at a high school for deaf children named Rives speaks about 
his, how his deaf students do spoken word poetry entirely in American Sign Language. And their slams are completely silent, but they know better than anybody that art should be a place without limitations or assumptions. So I've spoken a bit about what the problems with accessibility are, um, as well as why they are problems. But now I'd like to take a moment uh, to come, come up with some ideas for how we can help this. And my solution can be summed up in one word, and that word is educate. It is incredibly important that we educate not only the people within the artistic community, so the people who are actually creating art and art experiences, um, and to an extent where they become aware of how important it is to really include people with disability in those experiences, but it's also important to educate just the general public because we are what makes change happen. And as long as we um, create a society that is willing to adapt and to accept people with disabilities, we can completely we can change this um, this situation completely. So finally, my last. I'd like to leave you with a quote that I think really emphasizes the gravity of the situation and the reason why it is truly terrible that people with disabilities feel that they can't access arts um, in the same way that we can. Um, and this quote was from C.S. Lewis, who was speaking about art when he says, it has no survival value, but rather it is one of those things which gives value to survival. Thank you. Your turn. Yay. <laughs>